In order to preserve the meaning here, we have to keep the C there. And that's, you know, that's <laughs> another really, another really challenging thing about English spelling. But I think it's the other piece of this is it's so important to teach spelling along with reading so you can address these kinds of, of uh, features. And I have students who ask me all the time, why? You know, I also have, I also have teachers I work with who are learning how to teach this stuff and they say, what, how, why, why does it do that? How do we tell the difference? Is there a, is there a rule? You know, and sadly, no, there's not. Uh, English is, you know, I tell students all the time, English is messy and, you know, and that's so get used to it, it only gets harder. Um, so basically, just kind of summing up here, in order to uh, reach skilled reading, the capacity for deep reading, we have to develop accurate decoding, um, reading speed and accuracy, as well as thinking and reflecting those higher order, uh, more conceptual skills. And all of that goes into reading a word or a group of words. And then our executive functions, uh, which are our kind of planning and organizing part of our brain, that's what uh, coordinates all of these things too. So, so. Um, you'll be happy to know that now we're going to talk about strategies and instructional processes and things like that. Yes? Well, maybe um, when I was teaching, parents always asked about, you know, how can I help my child become a better speller? You know, so spelling seemed to be really crucial for families. And it is. I used to blow it off, like, oh, they're... Yeah, yeah. No, they're I'm not. a good speller, my husband is a right. fine, he's a better comprehender. You know, there's, yeah, there's right. so many strange nuances with it. To, right. I mean, we have the technology to certainly support better spelling, you know, so, um, and that's, that's, a, that's a great thing. And we have spell check, we have word prediction, and we have um, voice recognition software where you speak into the computer and up come the words. And it's great. Mm -hmm. But um, to, is it good to write it out three, five, three to five times? Is it better to no, spell it in the car with the parent, you know, as they're driving along? Maybe just what are some quick... Basically, uh, basically, spelling is best taught, again, with, um, with careful uh, reading word study. Um, so that you're, you know, you're doing, uh, if you are learning to read words that have short vowels with FL and S, you're learning to spell them too, so that you know that they reinforce each other, and they um, they support kind of the total, the totality of learning about words. So, spelling is uh, best for anyone who's having difficulty with language, learning to read, learning to spell. Trying to do it through memory is not an effective way to do it. You know, um, and I have you know so probably best to tie it in with, um, to ask your, your, your uh, child's teacher, you know, how you can support spelling. I do think... A lot of, at my, my, at my other kids' schools have no idea. <laughs> oh, no, I know. Exactly. <laughs> it's all over the board. And they yeah. from every district. It's just so crazy right, right. now. Right, right. Best, uh, the, the best way to do it is to combine it with vocabulary and right. meaning and um, and also word patterns. So, um, so here they're learning to spell as they're learning as they're studying words. So you know, I would I would suggest you ask, you know, your your uh, son's teacher. Oh yeah, I'm not concerned about him. I uh -huh. think I'm more concerned if I'm back in the classroom. What's you know, just what's the best spelling practice right now? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, I mean, for what can parents do at home? I guess to reinforce yeah. that. And I guess to really, um, if there's a good uh, multi-sensory uh, language instruction mm -hmm. program in place mm -hmm. to support that 
as best you can and to try and understand how, how that works. And it's, if you like words, it's interesting. Yes. Thank you for um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the book, um, The Logic of English. Mm -hmm. But I recently read that and I found that tremendously helpful with the spelling issue. Mm -hmm. And um, there's, uh, there's, uh, there actually is an extremely good book uh, by Louisa Motes, who's one of uh, one of our kind of icons in this world. This is not a good marker here. Um, if you're interested in reading more about spelling, she uh, has sort of written some of the best. Uh, best theoretical stuff on why we need to teach spelling and how we need to do it. <clears throat> and, uh, but also, if you have a really good multi-sensory language instruction program like the Wilson Reading System or well-trained Orton-Gillingham teachers can tie in reading and spelling together and that's very explicit. So, basically, um, what we uh, want to do here is look at, okay, how, what are the principles of instruction? So, to date, our best understanding and our best studies on reading instruction and how it changes the brains of students include these principles, that it's multi-sensory, so you see it, you hear it, you touch it, you write it. Uh, in various stages um, is really important. Sending home a list of spelling words that a child can memorize and then go back on Friday and spell when the teacher dictates it is completely useless. I had a student at Landmark um, who <coughs> was highly dyslexic. He uh, he came to Landmark in our language intensive curriculum, which we had there to try and uh, accommodate those kinds of issues. Um, he came with a less than first grade level in reading, and he had gotten a hundred on every spelling test that he had ever taken all the way through high school, which is probably one reason why his high school was paying for the tuition for a year at Landmark. But, um, you know, <clears throat> the, these are, uh, it's useless. It really is. So uh, it's, there has to be a better way for both vocabulary and for um, reading. And there are better ways. So also the principles of instruction of language means that it needs to be systematic and developmental. One concept builds on another. And that's how you, um, that's how you scaffold the instruction for students. And also, the instruction needs to be explicit. Um, most children, there are some children who, you know, at the very, who have great facility for language, and they need very little instruction but most children need some explicit instruction. They're not intuitive learners in this area because it's too complicated, you know. That doesn't mean they need a lot of exposures, but they need some. What, what, the one interesting thing that all the research that's gone on by the National Institutes of Child Health and Development is that we've learned that, you know, um, that not only is phonemic aware, you know, multi-sensory instruct, language instruction good for children who are at risk for reading failure, but it helps everyone, even those who are, uh, who are programmed really to do well. They do even better, even faster, if they have some foundational language principles. And then the word study piece needs to be important. Reading and spelling, we talked about that. And then here's the other thing that's important is in reading and, reading and spelling instruction. Children have to 
practice it until they are automatic. Just because they can, they can, they can sound out words does not make them able to read efficiently. They need to be able to really, to really recognize most word patterns. And I think this is one of the, the uh, one area where I see <clears throat> probably the, 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 the most problem, it's most problematic is that uh, teachers are afraid they're going to bore